not so much. Uh, but here we go. I'm going to start with the general settings. Obviously, I use controller. It's the best way to play this game. If you think otherwise, sorry. This is not true. Keep, keyboard and mouse is not better. There's a literal function called aim assist with controller. Like, come on. Um, field of view, if you want to keep this between 110 and 120, if you go to 120, you get that fish-eyed look. It's kind of roundish on the sides on the left and right hand side of your screen but it does give you the most vision from left and right so that's why I play on 120. 110 is pretty good it's probably the best you can get without getting that fish eye dome look on the sides of your screen uh, but I'm used to it I've been playing like this for six months so I'm not changing it. Uh, brightness this is all entirely up to your monitor setting and your computer settings as completely up to you subtitles off I don't use a I don't use colorblind like, you know, if you don't have your minimap as square by this point, you have just not been trying to get better at the game. That's just straight up facts. This is, you get more minimap. You just straight up have a bigger minimap at this point, it's making you able to see more people on your minimap. That's just the end of it. Uh, I keep this minimap rotation on just so I know where I am within proximity and in within reference to where everything else is shooting. So if someone's shooting me right here, but I'm facing like this direction, I know he's going to be on my left. But if I saw it right here, it would just really just throw me off. So I use minimap rotation. It's a preference thing. This is also preference. Preference. Um, this is a raid M game, and we like killing people, so obviously we're going to have the gore effects. Um, keep these three on, the FPS counter, server latency, and packet loss. These are the most important. These are obviously the most important ones. Excuse me. Um, FPS counter, make sure, because if you look up here, you see FPS, latency, and packet loss. If this is like, if your latency, that's your ping, that's your lag, so if this is a high number, that that's not a good thing. Uh, packet loss. If this is not zero during the game, get out of the match. Do not play that game. This is worse than having 200 ping. 1% packet loss is worse than having a, a high ping. Just leave the game. You will lose. Uh, FPS, make sure that's on just so if you're having frame drops, you can look at your computer, look at something, do some diagnostic work. Make sure you're getting the you know about your average frame rate so if this is for whatever reason low you're gonna know it uh... what else we got here uh... all of this i don't really turn on or off doesn't really matter graphics you want to play on full screen or full screen borderless don't play on the windows it reduces your frame rate full screen borderless reduces your frame rate a little bit but if you're streaming um... it helps you tab out and look at chat and stuff but from most optimization, just play on full screen. Um, set your screen refresh rate to your monitor's refresh rate. Render resolution. Um, you want to make sure this is at 100. Uh, and you really want to make sure you're on at least 1080p. Um, if it's on 720, you're just... You're going back to Modern Warfare 2 days where everything's using cables, like AV cables and shit like that. You have an HDMI, you have a display cable get with the times you should at least be on 1080p and you if this is not a 100 you need to make sure it's on 100 adjust your display resolution to where this will be 1080 uh, aspect ratio I just do automatic uh, v-sync I turn it off it reduces your frames because it makes your C your VRAM makes your computer work harder and does when it doesn't have to custom frame li frame rate limit I do uh, these two at 60 because when I'm not in game, I don't want my computer working harder than it has to uh, because it's not very strong. And why would I overheat my computer if I don't need to? But if I'm in game, I want as mo many frames as possible. So I mean, this is the most frames I can get with my monitor. So I just do 144 here, 60 and 60, so it's not work overworking my computer. Uh, display gamma, if you have a computer monitor, 2.2. If you don't, if you have a TV, 2.4. Streaming quality, have normal texture. If you have a fucking tank of a computer, you can turn these up. I don't. So low just to get the best visual uh, the best visual image that I can get along with a, a good amount of frames. So I just do low and low. 
Particle quality, you want it on high because for whatever reason it increases your frames. Putting on low actually reduces your frames. I don't know why, this is the way it is. And I'm not asking questions. Tessellation, you do all. Uh, doesn't hurt your frames at all. And you need to uh, be able to see things better. Uh, it's just there's more detail in the screen. Why would you not want that if it doesn't hurt you? On demand texture streaming, turn it off. Reduces your frames. Shadow map resolution makes it harder to see. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Reduces your frames. Particle lighting, you want on ultra because it has the same. I don't know why, but it increases your frames along with particle quality. So particle lighting, ultra, it makes your frames better. At the end of the day, that's what you want. Ambient occlusion, you want this at static GTAO. Uh, if you have uh, anti-aliasing on, anti-aliasing, you see these fences, you see how sharp this image is, these pointy fences. These are pointier the more you have this on, but it also eats up more of your CPU usage or your VRAM usage, so I keep it on this. So things that are pointy look pointy, uh, and then things just don't enemies don't blend in with like rounded surfaces so if like a rose skin was right here it would be a lot harder to see their head right here as opposed to right here where it's a little sharper and a rose skin is more round so I would be able to just make that differentiation right there a lot easier uh, filmic strength if you have anti-aliasing on you want this at one if you don't have it on you want it at zero it's that's just the way it is I really don't I can't give you a reason why, but that's just the way you need to do it. If you have depth of field and either of these motion blurs on, you are not a true gamer. You don't understand. You don't get it if you have these on. You just don't get it. These don't even belong in video games. The, the fact that these are still in the game is shocking. All, these, all this does is make it harder for you to see just across the board. They don't help your frames, they don't make it easier to see. This fucks with the colors and like the depth of field obviously. It's just weird. It just makes things harder to see. Just turn them all off. In any game you will ever play, turn these off. They should just not exist ever. Just turn them off. Film grain you want zero because why would you want to be playing with TV static as your background? Put it at zero. Dynamic resolution adjusts your frame rate in game. You don't want that. That will fuck your computer. Just turn it off. Audio settings. I don't know why I changed. Audio settings. I use boost low because uh, uh, footsteps, they are a bass sound. And if you have a bass sound, if you have the footsteps going, you're going to hear people. Obviously, why wouldn't you want to hear people walking ne next to you? The only con with boost low, though, is when you get shot, um, your like bleeding sound effects and your breathing, that's also a boost low or bass sound effect. So that will also be increased. So it does kind of have a con. It does get harder to hear things when you get shot. But when you're not getting shot, you can hear things way better. So just use boost low and try to get used to, uh, try to get used to it. And odds are, if they're if you get shot. They probably have dead silence with how frequent it is. So you're not going to hear them anyway if you get shot. So whatever. Boost low, you'll hear everyone. Um, these are all preference. Dialogue, you kind of want higher. Just, to, just so you can hear things, uh, people flying in on you, and they'll tell you. Sometimes I just completely miss it. Preference, preference, uh, voice. None of that really matters to your game. Controller. This is where it gets ungodly important for your gameplay. This is the most important thing any controller player can play on if you do not have a scuff. And even if you do have a scuff, this is still probably the best way to play. Tactical. It's just the best. What it does is it changes your circle and your right thumbstick. So now this is melee, the circle is melee, and your right thumbstick is crouch and prone. The reason that is, and slide, the reason that's so important, because all of your movement is now on your right thumbstick, instead of you having to, oh, I need to crouch, I'm getting shot at. Now I have to take my thumb off the stick to hit circle to crouch. 
you can't change where you're aiming, you can't drop shot people, you can't move your camera if you have to crouch. And that's not good. You need to have all that on one button. So you can do the crazy things like when you're aiming at somebody, you can crouch behind cover and just bob and weave through cover by just clicking the right thumbstick. Play on tactical. It's way better than all these other options. It's better than lefty. It's better than default by a mile. I don't know what any of these other ones do. Play on fucking tactical. I use flipped because a long time ago in Black Ops 4, my L2 button stopped working, so I couldn't aim down sight anymore. So I swapped to L and R1. But there's it's also better to use L and R1 because they don't they have less input delay because they're not triggers. You just press them and then they they work. Whereas if you use the triggers, you can kind of put in some input, but like not really. You can just use your pressure and kind of adjust it. Not the case with flipped. It's just like a mouse click at this point. Use tactical. If you want to use flipped, that's what I do. It's much faster. Just do that. Stick default. There's really no. Just use default. Come on, man. In vertical look, if you can play like this, you fucking go for it. But I've never met a soul in my life that does this, so don't do that. Dead zone, you want at .05 because it gives you the best um, area to move your thumbstick. You can kind of track much bunch better, be way more precise in your stick movement, as opposed to if you have it on point one, then you have to put in a lot more movement on your stick before an input in the game is actually going to work. So .05, it gives you good... Uh, with Dead Zone, you want to use .05 because if you just put your controller down and you kind of just move your thumbstick, you'll get some stick drift if you have it anything below this. .03, .04, you're going to have stick drift. .05, you will not. And then, as soon as you move your thumbstick just a slight smidgen just a tiny little bit it'll move and it'll move slowly and that's what you want when you're aiming and shooting at someone from far away horizontal six sensitivity and vertical I keep these all the same so I don't have to like get used to two different sensitivities I keep it all the same while I'm aiming while I'm not aiming the reason I use six as opposed to like six as opposed to like five or eight or something like that. The reason I use six is because it um, with the movement in this game everyone's usually a lot faster so what you do what you can what I found is that if you use six it kind of uh, you can follow people with it a lot better because it kind of runs at the same speed as most enemies will just sprint. So when I'm when I see an enemy in front of me and he's moving to my right, I can track him a lot easier on 6 because if I were to use like 10, I barely move my thumbstick and I've already lost track of him. If I'm on 6, I can look at him, aim, and then I can move my thumbstick pretty far to the right and track him just as easily. Whereas if I use 10, I barely move my thumbstick and I've probably already lost and I've already overshot it. And you don't want to do that. So just use I use six. Find something that works for you, but in my per, in my personal opinion, anything past six, anything below six, and anything above nine, it's too much. Below six is too little, and too, over nine is too much, especially if you're on 120 FOV. If you're on 120 FOV, if you're on 80 FOV, I would recommend like eight or nine. But if you're on 120, just use six. You're gonna it's going to shoot across your screen much faster depending on your FOV. Uh, aim response, curve type, dynamic. Um, I think what this means is depending on how much input you have on your controller. So if I barely move my thumbstick to the right, it won't move very quickly. Um, but if I yoed it all the way to the right, it will move at the 6 sensitivity where I have it set as. But if I barely move it, it will probably be like 2 or fucking one and it makes it a lot easier to track people at like 60 plus meters so I use dynamic I don't recommend anything else just dynamic aim assist use standard 
precision and focusing, they're not worth using at all. Basically, if you if you aim onto somebody, it will like stop your camera and stop your gun. You can't like track at all. At you can't track.